The Bible is our best guide to the afterlife. In spite of different opinions about the Bible, it continues to be the best seller throughout history. Hundreds of millions of people have been changed as a result of reading the Bible and doing what it says. Many people around the world believe that every scripture in the Bible has been given to us by God, our Creator. There are many references to heaven in the Bible. One is found in the prayer that Jesus taught his followers while he was on earth. The prayer starts with, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. As Jesus was preparing to return to heaven, he encouraged his followers by saying, There are many rooms in my Father's house. I wouldn't tell you this unless it was true. I am going there to prepare a place for each of you. So there is a heaven? Mm -hmm. I always thought if I was good enough, I'd make it. I'd have had my fair share of speeding tickets, but it's not like I've murdered anyone. I used to think that if I just believed there was a God, that I'd make it. But I didn't know what God had to say about getting into heaven. There are millions of people who have a spiritual relationship with God. That is, they know God personally and are sure they will spend eternity with Him. The Bible says we can know God. You can have a spiritual relationship with God too. Let's look at three things that prevent people from having a personal relationship with God. Then we'll look at how God has made it possible for us to know Him personally and receive all the good things He has waiting for us. The first fact is that everyone has sinned and is separated from God. Here in the Bible it says, For all have sinned and are not good enough for God's glory. We tend to measure the wrong we have done on how bad we think things are. Our society has decided that things like murder or child abuse deserves punishment by law, like being here in jail while we let other things like telling little white lies or sleeping around go relatively unchecked. The Bible clearly shows us that we've all been born with a bias towards sinning. Anything that is not like God's holy nature is sin. God is truth, therefore anything that is untruthful is sin. Untruthful as in dishonesty, lying, stealing, cheating or deceiving. God is just. Therefore, anything that is unjust is sin, unjust as in devious, corrupt, unfair or unlawful. God is also love. Therefore, anything that is unloving in words or action is sin, unloving as in unkind, jealous, unforgiving, hateful, revengeful or rude. Ah, and several of those things. The second fact is that there's a penalty for all the wrong we've done. The Bible says when people sin, they earn what sin pays, which is death. But we all have to die sometime. Well, why don't you click on death and see how we pay for our sin? Death, by definition, means separation. The Bible talks about two deaths. The first death is the separation of the soul from the body. When a person dies physically, their soul leaves their body and their body is then placed in the grave. The second death the Bible speaks of is spiritual death, the separation of the soul from God. This is the effect sin has. It is what the Bible is referring to when it says, when people sin, they earn what sin pays, which is death. Sin separates us from a holy God. This isn't looking so good. No, it's not, but keep going and it'll give you the complete picture. The Bible makes the third fact clear. It says that after death we will be judged. I hope this gets better. Oh, it does. God has provided an answer for the problem of sin. The Bible makes our situation clear. We have all sinned. Whether you have sinned a little or a lot, we are all in the same boat, as the saying goes. Because of our sin, we are all in a state of death that is separated from a holy God, and we all must face judgment. We are on this side. God is on the other side. On God's side, we have righteous, that is being right with God. 
righteous in place of sin, life in place of death, and no judgment in place of judgment. There's lots of different ways or roads to reach God though. We'll click on God's side and see what God says about it. From human perspective, there seem to be many ways to get to God, but in reality, our attempts to find God using religion, New Age spirituality, or being a good person will not work because the sin issue has not been dealt with. Sin separates us from God. God has provided the way for you and me to have a spiritual relationship with himself. That way is through his only son, Jesus. Jesus declared while here on earth, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father is through me. Click on the letter J and you will discover from the Bible the steps Jesus instructs you to take to enable you to have a relationship with his Father. Jesus said, I am telling you the truth. Whoever hears what I say and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life. That person will not be judged guilty, but has already left death and entered life. In order for us to move from this side to this side, Jesus instructs us to do two things. They are hear and believe. I am telling you the truth. Whoever hears what I say and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life. This invitation is for everyone. Because this verse says, whoever hears, you are included in the whoever. You've taken the first step in reaching God as you're now hearing his words. The Bible says the second step to move from our side to God's side is that we must believe. But what or who are we to believe in? Jesus said, I am telling you the truth. Whoever hears what I say and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life. We are instructed by Jesus to believe in the one who sent Jesus. That is to believe in God. The word believe means more than just believing about God. It says you are to believe in God. To believe in someone or something involves trust. God wants you to believe in him trusting Him with your life. To trust God with your life is allowing God to freely exchange your guilt for His forgiveness, to exchange your fear for His love and your will for His will. The exchange is made possible because God sent Jesus Christ into the world to take the punishment for our sins. The Bible says God shows His great love for us in this way. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. When Jesus died for your sin and mine, justice was met so that we do not have to be punished for our sins. Jesus not only dealt with sin's judgment on the cross, but the Bible says he conquered death by rising from the dead, enabling us to pass from spiritual death to life. Amazing. He used the words Jesus Christ in frustration many times before. But never understood what he actually did for me. Yeah, me too. There's a second point here that says, believe in Jesus' name. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, even to those who believe in his name. What does it mean to believe in his name? An angel came to Joseph in a dream and said, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the baby in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus' name means saviour. God sent Jesus to save us from our sins. We are to believe in Jesus, that he'll save us by forgiving all the wrong we've done. The Bible says of Jesus, if we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He will cleanse us from all the wrongs we have done. Hold on. Does that mean if I just confess all of my sins, they're just gone? I couldn't believe it either when I heard that. Let's just click on confess and see what it says. The confession the Bible is talking about is not just admitting your sins and being sorry that you have done wrong, but choosing not to want to do it again. 
When you confess the way the Bible says, this shows true repentance. When you agree with God concerning your sins and ask for His forgiveness, every sin is totally removed. Back to the verse we were looking at. He who hears what I say and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life. Not maybe or hope so, but has eternal life. It's a certainty. Having heard Jesus' words and believed him to save you, the verse finishes by saying, you will not be judged guilty, but have already left death and entered eternal life. God has provided a wonderful provision to save mankind. Before seeing how we can receive that provision, let's recap. The Bible says you have sinned and need forgiveness from your sins to make you right with God, righteous in His sight. The Bible says sin brings death, separation from God. Jesus' death and resurrection has made it possible for you to pass from spiritual death to life. The Bible says those who do not believe in Jesus will be judged. Jesus took the punishment for your sins on the cross, cancelling the judgment when you believe in him. Well, that sounds better. I love what he has to say. I have every reason to be happy, for I have received Jesus' freedom and joy. Before my life felt empty and meaningless, I felt nothing on the inside. After a broken relationship, I started experimenting with drugs. One thing led to another, and before I knew it, I was involved heavily in organized crime, constantly living in fear. Then I met Jesus. He is awesome. <laughs> he changed my life around. He's given me forgiveness and joy. I received from Jesus the peace and harmony and love that I was searching for. If you click S on the word Jesus, you too, can receive His forgiveness and His life for your life. I can relate to the way He felt. It's like I needed something to fill the emptiness I felt inside. The Bible tells us that there is not only someone to believe in, as previously seen, but someone to receive and someone to become. As many as received Him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. The previous verse in the Bible shows us that this verse is speaking of Jesus. We are to receive Jesus personally. According to this verse, when we receive Jesus, God gives us the right or privilege to become his child. The Bible does not give a set prayer on how to receive Jesus and become God's child, but from what we have learnt from this verse, we can pray like this. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. I receive you now as my Saviour and Lord. Thank you for giving me the privilege to become God's child. Would you like to pray that prayer with me to receive Jesus and become one of God's children? Your destiny is your choice. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. I receive you now as my Saviour and Lord. Thank you for giving me the privilege to become God's child. Amen. Welcome to God's family. You are now God's child and can be quite sure you have eternal life, not because of what I have said, but because God himself has said it in his word, the Bible.